Premier League weekend continues. 33 goals up to this point. Don't forget, today we still have Leicester Burnley to bring you from the KP and tomorrow, including Manchester City's first action of the season away at Wolves. We've already seen uh, wins, significant ones for Spurs and Brighton today and Liverpool have now joined them. Very, very early days. But supporters love glancing at the league table, don't they? <laughs> Particularly ones on Merseyside, I would suggest at the moment, because Everton are top on goal difference. Two wins out of two. The same for the former Everton man, Mikel Arteta at Arsenal. Liverpool have joined them and Crystal Palace as well. Of course, after Roy Hodgson's win at Old Trafford, Leicester have the opportunity to also make it six out of six, as I say, to take on Burnley shortly. Still teams yet to play. Uh, Villa, Burnley up next and City. West Brom, no points in two games. Southampton, Fulham and West Ham all the same. I guess a lovely 45 minutes for Thiago, his first in Liverpool shirt, but another terrific 90 minutes for Sadio Mane. We spent the pre-match quite rightly talking about Mo Salah. He often takes the headlines. I just wonder just how important that fella is to Liverpool though, Glenn. Yeah, for, for me, he's... He's just as important as any. Um, he, he, does, he seems to me to do everything right. You know, he's super explosive. Um, he brings his other teammates into the game at the right times. Um, he takes a game upon his own shoulders at the right times. Um, and, and you hear, hear him, Harry talks there. He's like the super pro. And, and, and his, his second goal just sums him up. Um, obviously giving the ball away, angry with himself and running past teammates to close the keeper down. He was involved in all the incidents today. We heard him say he told Andreas Christensen it was a red card straight away and eventually they got to the right decision. Yeah, I think when you're committing a foul or the one that's been fouled, you know straight away what's, uh, what's happened and, and you know, what was about to happen. So I think there was no question at all about the red card. He makes a fantastic run across his man, has the momentum. Christensen brings him down with both arms and it took Mr Tierney, the referee, two attempts to get to the final decision, the right decision but he did get there in the end. And it was VAR at its best, really, but no question about it. A red card, and it was a pivotal moment in the game. Yeah, because as we said at half-time, Glenn, when they weren't going to the monitors last season, we might have been mm. sitting here having a different discussion about a yellow card last season. Yeah, you're right. Um, well, I think we definitely would have been complaining why they, you know, somebody didn't go to a monitor and watch this uh, over again. So, um, yeah, no, today VAR has worked very well and, and got to the right decision. And how big a decision was that, the way the game went? But it's huge. Um, I, I touched on it earlier. It's, it's so tough to play against 11 men with, with 10. Um, and I'm sure Liverpool at that moment would have been, you know, within themselves over the moon thinking right now it's, we're going to get on the ball. And, it, and, and once they uh, played against the 10 after the second half kickoff, they ramped it up and got their goals and put the game to bed. How much did you enjoy then Liverpool's first goal, the build up to it? It was brilliant and it was classic training ground stuff really. I mean, the build up was great, keeping the ball. But just the last little movements, the little one-two, the, the run across the, the defender was, uh, was top class. Thiago was dictating play as soon as he came on, as we expected to. But look, when they get into these final thirds, they up the speed, up the tempo. And I just love the, the, uh, the run from Sadio Mane. If you've got a defender, if you can see a defender's number, you've got him. You've absolutely got him. And Rhys James was in the wrong position, didn't open his body out. And all of a sudden, he goes from behind him to nicking in front of him. At the time, another run was perfect. And the header was brilliant as well. I mean, he was the difference today, as you said, Steve, involved in all the big moments of the game. That's the striker's point of view. You said Rhys James was in the Chelsea <laughs> right back. Let's ask the former yeah. Chelsea one. How difficult is that to defend against? It's difficult. Um, it, sometimes you play against top players and top teams and they score great goals and sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. But for me, it starts with Alonso. You know... As a 14-year-old boy, as a playing in fullback, you get told to follow the runner, don't worry about the ball, uh, because you know it's going to be a one-two. And, and as, um, as Firmino sets the pass off to, to Salah, Alonso keeps watching the ball and it just completely switches off and then he's out of the game. Um, and then with Rhys James, not once does he check his... He can also see the one-two happening on the other side of the pitch and he, he doesn't check his shoulder at all. Um, and then, like Mo saying it, if the, if the striker comes quickly across you, you've got no time to react and then there's nothing you can do about it. So I think this is the moment they could have stopped it. After this, there's nothing they can do. Very difficult to defend, isn't it? I mean, one-twos yeah. are, are really difficult at the best of times, but as Jono says, as a full-back, um, he'd know better than, than anyone how to defend against that. But as a centre-forward, I'm thinking, or as an attacking player, I'm mm. thinking just get as, as, as 
as, as long as you've got him on the blind side, as soon as you can see his number, you know that the defender can't see you, then you're just totally in control of the situation. If the ball it looks as if it's about to be played, then you make your run just as the leg's coming back to cross it and you nip in front. It's all about timing. Now, yeah. goal two, before we get to the error, from a Liverpool point of view, straight away you noticed Sadio Mane's reaction and praised his pressing here. This is just him all over. You know, I see so many players, they make a mistake and they wallow with pity, they throw their arms around, and you see his reaction. He jumps in the air and then all of a sudden, so that's a little tiny split second of frustration. And then straight away, heads on it, right, I'm going to atone for my error. Look at this, the way he sort of just jumps, a little bit of frustration, <laughs> and now what? What am I going to do about it? Stand there and cry about it? Or get on the front foot, go and attack, uh, go and try to close the, the ball down? He's ran past Firmino, and you see Firmino pointing as well, saying, you close that one down, I've got this one covered. And that's exactly what he does, he blocks the pass. And... Uh, <laughs> Of course, it's a big mistake, but he's forced that mistake of Sadio Mane. Unfortunately, it's another mistake from the fellow we were talking about before kickoff in the Chelsea goal. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, it is. Um, and again, I don't know. You, you can't defend him. Um, obviously, he can see Mane's running right down his throat, so it's not like he catches him and doesn't see him. He can see him coming from a long way away. And with a keeper with low in confidence, you'd like to think, you know, just put your boot for it and then just get everyone up and get behind you, but. And, and to be fair, I think he made a couple in the first half as well in terms of being, uh, you know, positional play. Um, but obviously those didn't lead to anything, so he got away with it. But, but you clearly can't play, make little passes like this around your six-yard box. Yeah, and this is what you were saying before the game about his levels of confidence, understandably so, given what's happened in big games. Yeah, exactly. And, and this is one there. That he needs a sort of the awareness. When, when he sets off... He should realise where the ball's going and think, well, my fullback will get back in time and, and let him deal with that and then just stay in goal and just stay in control and dictate as opposed to, you know, rushing out. And I think he's just too eager to, to do the right thing that he's actually making the, the, the wrong decisions. There are reports out there suggesting Edouard Mendy from Rennes is going to arrive sometime in the next seven days. Would he go straight in, do you? Does, does Kepa need a little bit of a rest, Glenn? Well, I, I can't imagine that they'd sign someone like that and to not play. Um, or if you could attract a player like that to, to come and you know tell him that he's going to fight for his place. But it's a difficult one because obviously we all know how much Kepa cost the club. Um, you know He's obviously on a big contract um, and he's, he's going to be a player that they need to work with and try and get him back to his best at some point. Because as we said at the start of the show, he's on his days, obviously a fantastic player, but he's just not, he's just not showing at the moment.